where I was last, the, the sessions I was running last week was we were talking about workforce development and one of the challenges is we have people in our organisations and we do not know their skills. 45% of Victorians are involved in community governance. That means they sit on boards. Tony's here from my board. If I got you to put up your hands, probably two thirds of you are or have been on a board of a kindergarten or a whatever. That's an enormous resource. Do you know? Have you ever met the other resources um, <coughs> that sit out there in our community? So looking at some of those external drivers is, is really critical. I should say there are also lots of organisations like the board and various others, um, um, particularly consultants, who sit out there who get paid. We don't get paid very much. We're poor like everybody. Um, but there are consultants out there who get paid huge amounts of money to do this research, who build tools, who put them up on DHS or OTI or whoever's websites, and none of us know they're there. And so there's an enormous um, amount of resource that we really need to tap into, and the board is there to help do that. Now, I'm going to pick up most of that. Organisationally, the drivers in organisations create opportunity and motivation. Is there something that I'm able to do? Then I'll do it. Most people in the workplace will do anything. They don't really care what they do. Most of us, you know, will come in and we'll try and plug data projectors in and we'll help move chairs like we did this morning to get the room working. And it doesn't matter who you are or what you do. Most of us are problem solvers. We enjoy doing that. Do we create opportunities in our environment, in our working environment, to help people do that? There's a, a major driver, and that is we're looking now at people both having specialist skills and generalist skills. Nationally, there's a big project being run across the vocational education and training system, which is looking to identify within the community services and health, six or eight core competencies that might underpin everything within our particular sector. So that instead of people coming in and doing a cert for in disability, which has communication and work within a team and da 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 da, and then going to aged care and doing work within a team, da 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 da, there will actually be a series of, a, a set of core competencies. As somebody from industry, I loathe that as an idea because if I want somebody doing communication in a team in disability or in aged care, I want it contextualised to what they're doing and that's probably one of the most substantial barriers to the implementation of the vocational education and training system is we all own our own specialisation and you know, we all want people taught in our qualification. And so we actually have to, as organisations, think about how do we meet that tension between the specialist and generalist. As organisations, we're also trying to do more for less. And, you know, this is partly government policy, but it's partly our organisational policy. We're wanting to drive efficiency. We're being driven to efficiency by government. I come out of the welfare sector. The welfare sector's, on average, funded at 75% of service cost delivery. It's not funded at 100%. Government funds the community to do delivery because it's cheaper. It would be silly of them not to. So how do we actually manage that tension between the level of funding that we get to do these services and the amount of money that we have? I've got that. <laughs> so very prob problematic. Individual and team-based influences they're about ability and motivation and most of the time when we talk about training we talk about training to ability rather than training and thinking about ability and motivation because it doesn't matter what a person can do if they don't want to do it they won't do it you can take a horse to water but you can't make it think <laughs> so um, I was working with um, Lee Riddout um, last week who runs Human Capital Alliance and um, he created a cute little um, thing which said performance in any organisation equals ability plus motivation plus opportunity. <coughs> and I, we um, got a question from the floor, so I added, added leadership can be considered a critical aspect of both motivation and um, 
Oh, it should have been motivation and opportunity, and I made a mistake there. So, motivation and opportunity. You can have these slides, um, presuming that they'll go up electronically. Um, I'm not going to spend much more time on that, so can you flip to my... So the opportunities, people have talked about training, talked about RPL. I'd really say that where you start is to do an analysis of your organisation and the number of people you've got who have no formal qualifications and that's where you should be starting in terms of addressing people's retention. I worked with a project where um, a major welfare service started to implement a cert for in protective care for people working in residential care. They had 38 workers who commenced that. Two years later, 36 of them were still with them. In residential care, youth residential care, that is an outrageously good performance. Okay? Um, also work with organisations, people talk about induction, where everybody who came in um, into a management position did a, either a cert for or a diploma of business through a, 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 a blended um, process to make sure that managers had those skills. Younger people in community services, I cannot stress enough um, that, that gap between the number of available staff and the number that are there. I saw a fantastic presentation by a guy called Michael Smith who was a Prime Ministerial winner of the um, Apprentice of the Year. He had been a very challenging boy at school. A teacher took him aside and she said to him, um, I know you're a leader because you've done all of the break-ins in the town in the last couple of months. <laughs> <coughs> and she said, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redirect you. This is your last chance. And so you've got to pick somewhere to go and work. And he, and he picked to do a traineeship in aged care because he was moving in with his granny and he figured if he, wanted, if he had to wipe her bum, um, he, he wanted to be trained to do it effectively. Um, so he did, he did aged care and he's now at the point where he's gone through a Cert 3 in aged care, which he did as vet in schools, and very interesting, we don't do vet in schools at Cert 3, but if you've got higher achieving kids, why not? So he did a Cert 3 in, in, in aged care, came out, he's now doing nursing. Um, so he's articulated from the Cert 3 to a Cert 4, um, and now doing nursing. Um, a fabulous young guy, and very amusing, obviously. Older people, um, there's just been the refunding of the MAGIC project. Does anybody know what the MAGIC project was? Um, mature Age Getting Into um, Care, I think it stood for. Um, and um, they're recruiting people, um, older people. <coughs> if you look at the participation rate in employment in Australia, it's 2%, 3%, 5%. <coughs> over 55, it goes through the roof. Our biggest pool of people will be people over 55 but they will want to work two, three or four days and that's really important to think how you structure that. It's also really important to think if you've got two people working in one position that can double your training costs. Okay, So think about that too. Um, and the last area is new apprenticeships. I'm not sure if you're aware but where there is a significant skill shortage um, there has been moves to allow people with a Cert 3 or a Cert 4 to do a higher qualification. So um, in the community services and childcare, you can actually go from a Cert 3 or Cert 4 in childcare to a diploma of childcare as a train and do that diploma as a trainee having just finished your Cert 3 or Cert 4 as a trainee because there's an identified shortage there. As an industry, disability needs to be saying to government, we have a massive shortage, there needs to be a lobbying process to be able to access some of those critical government funds. Next. Forget that one. And there's some useful links and references there and I'll point you at the Community Active Careers webpage which is a national webpage designed to encourage young people to come into the community services. It's got some fabulous resources for employers as well. Thank you. Thank you.